Hey guys, this is Cyrus of Chaos. I'm here today with Oliver Lamb Watson, and we're going to talk about one of his bouts in a chair tournament. Enjoy. I guess a brief overview, it would be that, you know, there, there, are, about, there are three categories, um, A, B, and C, uh, for men and women. Uh, a is uh, what I am, so that's um, kind of a, a limb disability, or um, there's like a minimum disability level uh, that you need to, a criteria that you need to achieve. Um, so when people have like, you know, um, no hands, no, no feet, uh, no, no leg, uh, no, uh, no legs at all, um, stuff like that. But the, the main thing is that they've got core, uh, core control, uh, trunk control uh, of their body. Um, whereas cap B are people with more spinal injuries and people who haven't got uh, that sort of um, trunk control. So they're, they're a bit more off balance and the movement is slightly less. Uh, and then Katsky is someone who has problems with the hands uh, or with all four limbs. Um, but that the Katsky competitions are not as regular. They're not many of them as Cat uh, A and B. So they're only kind of really at the world champs and um, at. I, I don't think they do them at the Paralympics either. So uh, oh wow, there aren't that many Katsys. Gotcha. So how was the distance established at the beginning? Yeah, so the distance established, um, I think, I'm not sure if you see it in this, I think we've already done the distance, but essentially um, what happens is you sit straight in the chair, as I'm at the moment, you stick your arm out uh, towards the other, your opponent, and your tip uh, is measured basically against their elbow, so they basically um, point their, their tip towards the ceiling, um, with a kind of like, uh, uh, with their elbow p pointing towards the, uh, me or the opponent. And with foil the dis and saber, the distance is a little bit closer, so it's to the inside of the elbow, whereas with epee, it's just touching the elbow on the outside. Interesting. So that's how you, uh, so that's why, for example, two people with really long arms, you can have them a massive distance between them, but uh, me and this guy, we've both, both got quite, uh, quite diddy arms, so that's why we're quite close. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So do do a lot of chair fencers fence multiple weapons? Uh, yeah, so I think mostly, um, I mean, I can only think of one or two people that actually fence uh, one. Um, because I, I guess, I, I'm not really sure of the exact reason, but I think given that wheelchair fencing is a little bit faster, um, you know, than Abelbod, uh the times of some of these matches are like, you know, 15 seconds for a DE on, on the clock kind of thing. And some of the five point matches are, are literally done in three seconds on the clock. Which is my kind of fencing. So, pardon? As a saber fencer, that's my kind of fencing. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and also I think given that we don't really do leg work, um, which I know is a huge part of Abelbod, um, it basically allows us to do few weapons. Um, that's a good point. I hadn't thought about it like that. Yeah, so the major even some people do three. Like I know a couple of people that do three, three weapons. Two uh, is so predominantly you see people that are either kind of two weapon. Uh, they do two weapons. They like two weapons. That's it. Um, and you you get others who are kind of one weapon specialists who then just do an extra weapon because uh, to to get more ranking points. Um, as well for us, the Paralympic ranking this year. Uh, with the cycle rather, um, was done on a dual ranking system. So across both weapons, uh, so that's a reason why some people would um, take up another weapon if they only did one, for example. Or some people did three to give themselves the best sort of chance of get, uh, qualifying for Paris. Wow. Yeah. All right, shall we start? Yeah, let's go for it, go for it. Have you fenced this guy before? This guy I've fenced a couple of times. Um, he's a bit tricky. He's an older guy, but he's got a lot of experience. He's really scrappy. Um, and we've had a couple of DEs before. So I think I've fenced him. He's knocked me out about three times in DEs previously. Uh, I just I have an absolute nightmare with him. He's like a double uh, Paralympian. So I think he's got Paralympic medal in, in team foil as well. Wow. Forth, I, think. I, think, I think he came forth. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, he's double power and It's pretty tough. <laughs> yeah. And I'd also imagine that because the legs are 
I mean, the, 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 the physical movement with the footwork is non-existent like we talked about before. You can be relevant for a lot longer in chair than you can in able fencing, right? Yeah, hugely. Uh, you get a lot of people who are, I mean, the average age of wheelchair fencing, I think, is a lot older. Yeah. Um, people in their 50s uh, making top 16s, top 8s. Uh, people, I mean, a lot of the people on the podium are like, um, you know, a lot of them are young guys, like 20, 20 somethings. Um, and some some of the top foilists, some of the top sabers and stuff like that, they're, you know, 30, um, kind of, I think some of them even close to, to 40, some of them. Um, I think you have a few Russian guys that they are a bit older. I mean, they look, they look older, they've got beards. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, one more question before we start. I yeah. see that your feet are strapped in and his are not. Yes. Is that a choice so, that you made? Yeah, so basically you can have different straps depending on your ability. Um, one strap that has to be cleared by the kind of federation um, is a hand strap. So if you're strapping your hand to the wheelchair, you need to show that you you have a disability that shows that you can't actually grip the wheelchair. Got it. So you see on my left hand where the glove is. Some people have literally strapped their hands to the chair because they've got grip problems. But apart from that, you're allowed um, to have straps. And, you know, some people have straps just over their feet. Some people have no straps at all. Some have over their over their leg and their lap. Um, and some have over their, like, I know uh, a guy on my team has got on his, um, he's got them under his knees, uh, for, like around the front of the chair and over his, his lap. Um, so, you know, just depending on, on what suits you as a fencer, and your, your style, your body, your disability. Um, so, for example, the reason I don't have a strap over my leg where he has got one is because um, I maybe I move a bit more. I use my right leg a little bit more, pushing it into the, into the, into the plate to mm. the movement, as opposed to his leg, which isn't uh, pushing anywhere. It's just using it to stabilize. He doesn't fall out of the chair. Um, I don't put a, a strap over my legs because it, my left leg, as you can see, I've got a little like a black uh, guard on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it gets it's very sensitive, so the strap on my legs actually hurts. So that's why I've only got one on my feet. Gotcha. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> Go for it, yeah, let's do it. So yeah, okay, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> starting early you get a lot of red cards and yellow cards and that kind of stuff in wheelchair because getting off the line quick it's a huge advantage yeah it, it's it's like that in saber as well for the able weapon but it does like they don't care at all if you move first in foil or epi unless you're doing it with only a few seconds remaining because then it is a big advantage uh, okay yeah well with us like as soon as they call um pre if you move at all in that time you get a yellow card mm. okay so people pick up like several several yellows per, per reds per match yeah it's um, it's tricky because you need to go as soon as possible to get the advantage but if you go too soon obviously it's it's like a huge advantage so they need yeah, to be harsh with that a funny thing actually comparing it to able body is that in wheelchair they because um we're so close and it gives such an advantage they actually vary the alley yep so i don't think that's something you guys do in able board uh, some of us do it more of us should do it <laughs> yeah um, so you guys, so we go on guard, prayer, alley, or on guard, prayer, alley. Like, it's varied every time so that you can't get a read on the pattern. That's my personal style as well. I, I wish more people would do that. For anyone watching this who's refereeing, please do that more often. Um, yeah, so, I mean, do you want to, how do you want to talk about the, um, the, the fencing in, in the sense of, like, tactically, uh, uh, physically? Anything you want. This is totally new for me, so... Okay. Well, if you have any questions or uh, uh, kind of queries or ideas or what things you want to kind of talk about it, um, then then yeah, then just stare it that way. But otherwise, we can just kind of have a little a general chit chat. Okay, I will keep doing that. Go for it. I'm just gonna go back to that first one again. Yeah. So it's me trying to it's, flick him on the back. Yeah. Most. So I'm just me trying to flick it over the top. But... He's also leaning way over, so the, the back is exposed. Yeah, but he's getting so close, he closes the distance, it's really difficult to actually get the flick on, um, especially in time, because he remises quite, uh, quite, quite a lot. And this next one is attack off target, correct? Yeah, so... Uh, oh God, pray, Ale. Um, I think actually that was, that was uh, given as simultaneous. Okay. Um, 
you get quite quite a few of those. So next one, yeah. So there's me. I, Another one flat. Uh, uh, with the with the parry, um, but not making the repass. Yeah. Uh, just again, I'm trying to flick up on again. It's 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 different. People are, diff are difficult to flick. I think I, at this point I was a bit like nervous. I was like kind of holding my flicks back a bit, but. I think it can be quite tough, especially with the body moving so much. Um, but there you go, you can see again in that one, uh, the distance that you can create with the body as opposed to the feet. That, uh, yeah, again, <laughs> me getting absolutely smashed. Yeah, might be time to start finishing straight. Yeah, exactly. That's why my, my coach was shouting at me, he's like, drive with the point, stop blicking. <laughs> I think it took me a few more hits to get that through my head. Um, where are we now? Yeah, okay. So, again, at this point I was basically like, going back, trying to flick is not, is not going to work. So I was like, let me just push forwards. Uh, he's quite a, a scrappy fencer. Not, I don't mean that in a negative manner, but it's just a, a style. I'm a scrappy uh, fencer. Pardon? I'm a scrappy fencer. That can be a compliment. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, I was like, you know what? Look, I'm just going to get down and dirty with it as well. I'm just going to go in, and kind of take these big, big parries, kind of dominate the blade a bit more, um, which seemed to be a kind of bit more successful than the flicks. Mm. <laughs> I find these slippery llamas as well a nightmare. As me trying to, trying to kind of like absolutely skewer him with it. Um, but yeah, just trying to find, um, use the absence of blade because like in this small um, distance, they f they refine the blade so well, these kind of top guys. Um, and there's an example, if you go back too far and don't then lunge full full pelt, drive with the point, they can get you on the remise before you've even sat up straight. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was yeah. on his part. Yeah, it's crazy how this guy gets the point on. It's mental. It's in such a small space. <laughs> and so there's a, another kind of false start, and he's saying that it was me. <laughs> it was not you. Yeah, he was like, uh, um, he's like, action reaction. Um, so there, he's got he's got his first yellow for, for starting early. Okay, I just saw him move his blade to the outside of your blade. Is he trying to yeah. just control the outside line there? And how do you how do you decide who gets to do that? Okay, so, um, good question. Um, with left-handers, it's a bit more prevalent because, um, obviously, it depends who wants to control the outside line. Um, what generally happens if, for example, I'm ha I personally like to come on guard on the outside line um, with left-handers. Um, so what happens is that I then, I usually try and come on guard second, so I put my, my blade on the outside line. What then <laughs> some, some of them will do, like this guy, is he'll then move his blade to the outside line. Yeah. So now in this scenario where we both want that outside line, uh, what happens is that you, you take it in turns. So for example, this one, he'll take the outside line. And I'll be like, okay, fine, you take the outside line now because you've established that you also want it. So then next round, I will I will then take the outside line. And if he tries to move his blade, I'll say, I'll say no, no, you took it last time, this time it's me. Um, but with wheelchair, you can come on guard in pretty, it especially happens a lot in saber and foil, is people sometimes come on guard in, in cart line so, uh, I mean, not a lot, but occasionally. So, again, it, it, people vary their on guard slightly. Um, I, I personally have a bit of a weird on guard, as you can kind of see here. Um, it's more of a kind of high tiers, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the kind of more traditional cease that are, like most of the other fences have, um, which I just prefer a, a tiers on guard, personally. Um, it feels more natural to me, but it's just, yeah, it depends on, uh, on, on the fencer. Makes sense. Yeah. So you'll see us uh, switching blades a lot. <laughs> so there, for example, because he went on the outside line, I was just like, just go just drive it through down down to the lower le lower kind of like um, kind of groin area, because if he wants to find the blade, he's going to have to kind of chase mine. So I was like, it's, it's playing these sort of tactical mind games with like who comes on guard where, what's previously happened, and what you think you can uh, kind of get away with. Uh, me there not getting away with the flick again. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, here's me kind of like waiting it out, I think. Um, yeah, you get a lot of off targets, especially in wheelchair, I think, because you're hitting the chair as you kind of lunge. Mm -hmm. 
and as well with um, with the testing, because the little clip, if you can see, is uh, just by by your kind of uh, your the groin hip, area. It comes off quite frequently in the moving in the chair, so it's important to keep testing. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can you can lean back pretty far, probably outside the range where your comp your opponent can actually hit you. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, it depends. Like you should see some of these guys. Like my range is not as much as some of the others, but that's generally what you you should be able to do unless like your opponent's got like freakishly long arms. <laughs> um, is you should be able to lean back far enough whereby your opponent can't hit you, um, and you can take the parry. So that that's yeah, it's really how you kind of take the distance. So how uh, long do I have to lean back for before I get a non-combativity card? That's it's the same as. Um, uh, do you guys have it? Uh, no. So so in wheelchair we have um, fifteen seconds uh, leaning back uh, is a non combativity. Okay. So um, if I I need to come in in that fifteen seconds I need to come back up past uh, like kind of um, middle the middle point so where I'm sat now. Gotcha. Um, in order to 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 kind of, I need to basically form an attack or come back to on guard position um, in order to kind of uh, zero that. Arc. Makes sense. Otherwise, you could just camp, like get one point up and just camp there for the rest of the time. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, uh, a lot of uh, what it what it tries to stop is is people, you know, setting the distance really, really long. So, for example, if he can't reach me at all in Epe, especially, um, even in foil, and just in foil, the, the distance, the, the time doesn't run out as quick as Epe, for example, because with the off targets, off targets yep. but with Epe, it can be a huge thing where you just, the guy can't reach you. You get one point up at the beginning, the guy can't reach you. You sit back for the whole match. So that's, it's, it's to stop that kind of thing. Mm. So we are... Um, You're on the inside, right? Yeah, exactly. So there I was trying to kind of take the kind of low beat and, and flick. Again, wasn't a... <laughs> wasn't successful. I, I wasn't. I, I just couldn't find um, the flicks on this one. He's he. He thinks it was different. his, but he's uh, he's wrong. It was your priest affair, just off, um, just flat. Yeah, exactly. I think he wears a bit of a, a chest plate as well, so it was really difficult I to hate get the that. actual point on. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <coughs> so yeah, it's me trying to lunge with the point counter counter attack for the win. <laughs> My favorite action too. Yeah, big. <laughs> um, again, it not working that time. <laughs> I think it, it, it's it's funny because with foil and the priority weapons in in wheelchair, it can sometimes feel a lot like you know rock paper scissor, mm -hmm. um, whereby you know if you're lunging, if you're taking the parry, or if nice. you're just going premeditated off alley, like uh, based on what you you have. Uh, gathered what your opponent might do mm -hmm. um, so for example you know a lot of people are like oh uh, he's gone direct three times in a row he's probably going to like uh, you know go compound this time or something like that or I'm going to he, he's not gone direct he might go direct at some point soon so let me like kind of be ready for a kind of big sweeping parry um, and it's it because you can get blasted off alley so easily in this it's, it, it, it kind of creates that rock paper scissor type atmosphere yeah able-bodied saber fencing is like that as well but the other two yeah. are not so i can definitely relate to that aspect of it yeah uh, i think i kind of just parried into my own knee there uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay here we are Mm, just fixing all of his wires, etc. It can be a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. So I think now... I was, Ooh! I was, um, that was good. Thanks. <laughs> I think I was getting a bit more of the idea of, like, the... Um, the kind of to and fro of it, you know, kind of waiting attack, no, finding the blade... Uh, making the attack. If he finds it, go back again, um, and just get it, getting in, making the attack, getting out of there when you had to. So if your foil saber epi whatever gets stuck in the chair, is that a halt immediately? Yeah. So for example, if I and it happens quite a few times, if you hit the chair and it gets stuck in it, you usually would let go of it and just be like, and, and stay in that position, let go of it, and, and put your left hand and put your hand in the air, be like, show I, the referee. I, 
I'm out of action kind of thing. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Happens more so in foil and sabre, because you don't have the skirt. Yeah. So, here we are. Seven all big come oh they there's for example me getting blasted off alley. Oh no, Lucky him you. Going <laughs> <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> that was an important point too. Yeah, hugely. Um so here's another one, here's an interesting point because he gave that to uh, sorry, she gave that to the left. Um my interpretation of it um was he, he stopped uh -huh. and then I attacked. And then he finished. Gotcha. Um, so attack no, and then and then attack from the right. Whereas she's saying no, his attack was 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 continuous, um, and it really this is, again is an interpretation of of priority. It, it, how slow is too slow, and how long can you can one attack last? Um, in my opinion, I think he he stopped, um, but the definition of it is moving forward with the hand and the body at the same time. In my opinion, his body did stop at some points. Um, and that's when I launched into it. But um, again, I mean, watch it again, see what you think. I don't know, like, who would you give it to, for example? Well, we can watch this in slow motion, actually. Yeah. Nice. So, in my opinion, he stops there. Yeah, I agree. And that's when I attack and he finish and he finishes. Yeah, I agree with you. So for me, it's attack no left and I I I I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but I felt like the timing was pretty 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 spot on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but again, it's really like the interpretation of people's. Uh, I mean, I guess it's the same with Abelbot is is interpretation of of priority, isn't it? Yeah, it is. This this is one of the situations that I don't really have a feel for, having not experienced it myself. And I know yeah. that as a, a saber fencer and a saber referee, it's so important to have the experience of what it feels like on the inside. Yeah. And I don't have that here. So from from what you say, I agree with you. He stops. But I, this is the first time I've ever seen an action like that. So yeah. it's hard for me to judge based on that. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I mean, I'm a big fan of that slow sort of marching attack, but I think... That was too slow. In, in, in his case, he did stop. Yeah. Um, I feel like if you stop, it's, it's attack no. Right, exactly. Otherwise, it's, yeah. it's even like moving in at that point for you would be disadvantageous if you could just allow someone to hang there like that. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of a weird situation. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's a time in the next couple of hits. Oh, this is quite a big hit. So yeah, last, last action was my post. I think, <laughs> uh, according to her anyway. I actually thought uh, that he waited too long after whatever happened, and then you were the one who started first again. Uh, in, the, in the last one? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, I felt. But in, in, um, in the, I think there's another point coming up fairly soon, um, whereby I wait a little bit longer than previously. So here, and, um, I just think he waits too long to start doing anything. Yeah. Fair. Unless that search that you did is enough of a punishment to have right of way seed back to him again. Yeah. So yeah. But I personally think that. Um, Pardon. I personally think that you may have gotten this point because of the conversation, or not this point, but this 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 off target right of way because of the conversation you had with Suzanne on the last touch. Yeah. And sometimes they'll they'll think like. You know, as a, as a referee, sometimes you make a mistake and they point something out to you and you're like, yeah, maybe I missed that. So, like, you're, you're, more, uh, you're more watching for it on the next one. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think there's a point, maybe it's this one or the next one, or, um, whereby he does this, in exactly the same attack, the kind of slow marching, and I just wait a little bit longer. And, uh, again, sometimes I think it's finding the timing that your, your referee recognizes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he was a bit annoyed about that, to be honest. <laughs> he seems to get annoyed yeah, about a lot of stuff. Yeah, Suzanne giving Suzanne a bit of an earful there. 
Okay, anyway, here we go. There's the kind of uh, the flat flick yeah. in return <laughs> uh, for, for another feature. <laughs> He's, he's a master of getting the point on somewhere. Yeah. It's tough. I can't believe I don't know how he does it maneuver the point in such a small area. Ooh. There. Blasted me straight through. That's the tough one. I find that particularly difficult sometimes with these kinds of guys when it's close like that. There's a nice little counter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew for like uh, he blasted me last time with the uh, with the straight through, so I was like, you know, pretend to go back, then go in. That was just me being an idiot. <laughs> Honestly, I'm amazed that you win this bout given all of the opportunities that you're missing with those. With flicks. Yeah. Yeah. I do another one really bad one at some point soon. <laughs> uh, where is it? So yeah. No, that was off target again. The remise can be deadly in these, as you as you sit up. Yeah, I'm sure. This is me uh, hitting him off at the time. <laughs> yeah, so they're again going back to the sort of more dominating style of like just grounding the blade and just being like off. It's not that one. Yeah, there wasn't much of an angle there either. Um, what do you mean? For you to hit. Yeah, I managed to just about get it on, like, Massialis style. <laughs> yeah, I was quite pleased with that. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah. <coughs> no argument from him. I think that one he didn't actually hear Ale, so uh, kind of missed an, missed a nice opportunity there to get a little point. <laughs> yeah, totally. So here, that, that, oh, that that's was the exact, agreement you were talking um, about. Yeah, we were talking. Yeah, we we're talking about moving in and out of the outside line. Was me uh, giving the blade a little bend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so same, same. Grounding it, pirate pass all day. <laughs> Hopefully. That seemed pretty clear to me. I, I, I think so. He didn't seem to agree. Who knows? A lot of the posturing is not sincere. Like sometimes yeah. I'll, at, sometimes as an athlete, I would ask a question that about a touch that I knew was against me just to either get the referee thinking about it or to give myself a second to like, to think or just to control the the pace a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I think that this guy, especially, you see with all the time he talks to the talks to the ref and uh, kind of sorts out wires and stuff. He's he's a he's really good at managing his own the time. Yeah, exactly. Managing the pace of the fight, it's which important. is something that uh, obviously when I'm fencing him is what I'm trying to do as well. Is is <laughs> is there? You go. Perfect examples. I, 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 I waited for him for ages to come on guard. Now it's your he turn. Finally, Fix your blade. Yeah, and then he he then he stops again. Attack Touche from the right. Nice. But I think it's important to manage that like um, tempo of the fight. It definitely is, and more than that, it's important to not be thrown off or bothered when your opponent is doing this because yeah. they're they're doing it because what you're doing is bothering them. Yes. And I think um, you can see here as me just kind of hanging out because in the past when I fenced him many times is when he's doing all this, I think I had a hair in my mask, um, is uh, I, let, I, I let it get in my head. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get as kind of chill as possible. Yeah. And that's an experience thing too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> same, same. Three points in a row. <laughs> Yeah, I think Ooh. then he gets red card for, for chatting too much. So, at this point, I was freaking out. 
That was, uh, kind of my mind was just going mad, like, shit. Excuse me, <laughs> I don't know if I can swear on the channel. Um, uh, oh my god, like, might, might make top 16, this is crazy, like, super happy, like, uh, trying to kind of calm my nerves a bit and and uh, not let myself run away with it. Yeah, at, at that point, with you thinking like that, it's probably good to get a little bit of a break right now. Yeah, um, so this kind of did me well, I was kind of just trying to stay as focused, but... And you don't present. show it at all, either. Pardon? And you don't show that at all, either. Oh, that's good. I was, my mind was chaos. <laughs> I'm glad. So yeah, these couple, uh, couple of tough points. So I, I felt like that was potentially, I don't know if I found the blade, I, 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 can't, I haven't got volume, but in the next one certainly, same thing happens, I think. Hmm. Uh, maybe, maybe not enough. Maybe it's sort of like it, it looked as it the, the language of it looked a bit more counter attacky. Yeah. And so much offensing is about how it looks too. Yeah. So that one I certainly thought was mine. Because both beat, but you're attacking. So yeah, I think we both went for it. Um, but you know, I think it was, it looked simultaneous so at the same time. I'm aware that even though me, I, I, I had the intention of what I was doing, he maybe had the intention of doing the same thing. And so it's just how it looks to the, to the, on the outside, I think we both went for the beat and then we went in. Yeah. Maybe his look, maybe, you know, I thought it was more dominant, but the same, same. Yeah, no off target. <laughs> He's saying he touched my blade. <laughs> Yellow card. No thanks. No thanks. <laughs> God, did I miss uh, that? Absolutely went through him. So, uh, I felt again. I saw you go for the blade as well, yeah. Yeah, personally, I think that one was the one where I felt like it was potentially my power post. Uh, I can't do. I can't hear it on on this, but I'm pretty sure he found connection and I went for it. But either way, this, but I think this is the one where I was like, "Boff, yeah, absence of blade, body first is king." <laughs> oh, he, he got a bit annoyed because I was. Uh, I shook his hand a bit too um, aggressively, uh, enthusiastically. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I was, I was, I was uh, quite happy. I think he got, he, he was a bit uh, wasn't wasn't as happy as, as I was at the point yeah. as that that stage. Shocking. Um, but yeah, that that that. I mean, do you have any questions? Well, we've 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 answered a lot of the questions while everything was going on. Is there anything else yeah. that you wanted to say that we didn't mention while this bout was happening? Um, gosh, off the top of my head. Um, I don't know. I think it's it's um, in between. I guess the thing to compare it to would be Ablebod, because um, I think a lot of your viewers and you, especially, you're a lot more well versed with Ablebod. Um, and I think seeing them wheelchair. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not like a super like good expert at wheelchair fencing. I, I've I've come into this fairly recently, and. Um, this is, you know, my first season, and uh, I've only been competing internationally for about two years. So I'm not like the be all and end all, and I, I don't want to kind of uh, preach too much. But I, I guess from what a lot of people have said is, is that although obviously they're the same sport, the same time they're they're very very different, um, and there are similarities and they overlap in certain ways. But they at the same time they're they're almost completely different sports in, in timing, um, in the blade work in the tactics um uh, it's just it it's funny getting an a bod actually in the chair um and fencing with them and hearing what they say afterwards just thinking like oh, this is completely not how i expected it to be and i think creating that distance with the body as opposed to the feet um and there being a limit of obviously when i go back all the way if they can still reach me it's sort of similar to being on your back line um mm -hmm. Uh, and then just how quickly you can kind of lunge, but lunging, you know, I can't run down the piste at you. I, there is a limit to my lunge, especially physically because of my body. I'm not that long. Um, 
and I think all of those things come into play and they, they influence people's styles a lot more and um, the way in which they fence, um, which I think, yeah, it gives for a really interesting... Also, I think, I think as a sport, I, I love it because it's one of the only um, Paralympic sports, uh, I think there are a few others, but whereby um, a Paralympic, uh, a, para, a para fence, a wheelchair fencer gets in the chair and like a, a top level one would beat uh, their top level able-bodied in the chair purely because they're used to that chair and they're used to that um yeah totally uh, that environment which i think is a really cool thing um have you ever seen that. um there there are some videos on youtube of like um a bodybuilder doing an yeah. ar like a an arm wrestling with a professional arm wrestler and yeah it's funny because you see like the, the bodybuilders are like jacked and yeah. the people who are like professional arm wrestlers are not they're just like much more lean but it's just like it's it's funny how easy it is for them to win. Yeah. <laughs> when it It's like it's uh, <laughs> you know, it's in that sort of uh, Yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's experience over I don't know. Yeah, it's it's their <clears throat> their sort of playground as opposed to, you know, you're getting these up the able body would be a fish out of water in um For sure. scenario. And I and I, I think appreciating them as different sports as opposed to the same but one in a wheelchair is is really important. Um, yeah, but I really encourage any of you guys, like you as well, um, and anyone who's watching it, give it a go because it is good fun. And I think a, a huge misconception sometimes is that a lot of people see it as like a kind of lesser sport, which I think is is bad. Um, and I, I think giving it a go is, is is a really great way of seeing, you know, the kind of complexities of it and kind of appreciating it for what it is. Yeah, totally. I do have one more question. I yes. know that. Um... I personally don't like fencing taller people as much. It's it's just yeah. more difficult for me. How much of a factor is that in chair fencing? Um, so, again, I think the people come in like huge, like there's a huge variety of shapes. You know, some people are really long, like they have long arms, they have a longer lunge then basically, um, which means that you have to lean back further or take a parry. Uh, it also means the distance is further. So if you're lunging, they have to move back. They, they, they move back and you then can't reach them because the distance is so long. Mm. Um, I think in Epe especially, it gives quite a, a good advantage or maybe not advantage as such, but it kind of lends itself more to that, that weapon because you can get the remises and and, um, and you can get the, the kind of the counterattacks. So Sounds like an advantage to me. Off. Pardon? Sounds like an advantage to me. Yeah, um, where, whereby... I guess the advantage is still there in in foil and saber with with this, but, but I think it's negated slightly by the priority in the right of way, because if for example I can't reach you, I go attack. No, I head off target, maybe to your leg or something, which you cannot move out the way. Mm. Um, and it means then, for example, if you then launch straight through me, uh, it's still get timed out. Target. Um, Sabre is a bit more difficult, obviously, because you, you, you can't hit off target. Right. So, yeah, the, in, in all of them, the, there are certain aspects of that. I think, you know, shorter people um, don't get the, the, the kind of reach over the, for the flicks, maybe. Um, their lunges might not be as long, but, you know, I'm not the tallest dude by any means. I'm not that long, but I guess I, I can put, I mean, this is a terrible example for that, but usually I can put the flicks on the back like quite, <laughs> quite well. Um, it just it really kind of yeah it depends it, it forces you i think to fence in a certain style mm -hmm. um and fence to your advantage you know if i tried to fence like a, a long arm person it would be different it would be rubbish um i need to be kind of you know fenced to my ability and um i personally am not a huge fan of fencing people with like long arms but um i think that's just something that i, I you know it's everyone's thing isn't it and in, in foil, are, are there are there opponents where it's harder to fence them if you're too close because they're so like their arms are so short? Or yeah, well, this guy is perfect perfect example for that. He brings the distance in so this is the closest you'll ever see two people fence mm. um, in wheelchair, and so because he, he's he's got such a short arm, uh, and he's a master of just get, like he leans straight forward, so he gives you no no space. Um, and closes the distance so much you can't get the flicks on. You want it, you, He completely dominates the um, the kind of uh, mi the, the 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 middle area. So you have to, you you feel like you got to go around him. Um, if you put your blade anywhere near the kind of middle, uh, he'll just refine it or wrap it up. Um, 
And so I, I, I feel this is a really good example of that, of fencing someone who is who brings it very close and thus it can be quite a nightmare for people with long arms and people with normal arms if you're not used to that really scrappy infighting kind of uh, uh, scenario. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you for taking the time to walk me through all of this and to, to analyze this bout with me. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's good fun. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I hope if you guys have any more questions, um, yeah, just drop me, drop me, uh, or drop, drop, drop a comment, and then I, I can kind of maybe reply to it on on your YouTube channel when it goes up. Perfect. And I'll also post a link to your Instagram, so if people have oh, questions, they can, so much. Appreciate they can that. at you there, of course. Awesome. Okay. Well, um, yeah, good, good chatting, and uh, and speak to you in a bit, mate. Fantastic. Thanks, bro. Take care, dude. See you later. You too. Bye-bye.